There is this one mystery in astronomy that's still unresolved even today. The mystery in regards to extremely massive black holes. Black holes that are usually way more massive than anything known to us, and black holes whose mass is extremely difficult to explain if these objects were growing as we expect them to grow over time. And in the last few years, quite a few of these black holes have been discovered, but more importantly, in the last year of the James Webb Space Telescope observations, quite a few of these unusual objects have already been discovered in the extremely early universe, when the universe was under 500 million years old. And because many of them have masses usually much higher than the one in the Milky Way galaxy, explaining them once again became a little bit difficult, but not impossible. There are two major explanations. One of them essentially involves these population 3 stars, or first stars in the universe, and you can actually learn more about this in one of the videos in the description, that would collect so much early hydrogen and grow so massive that eventually they would just collapse into relatively massive black holes, possibly hundreds or even thousands of solar masses in mass. And then by joining together with other gas and other similar black holes, they might grow into black holes that would be millions of solar masses. But this so-called sequential process fails to explain something else. It actually fails to explain some of the earliest quasars that have been so far discovered by the James Webb and by a lot of other telescopes. And because quasars are some of the most luminous or most bright objects in the entire universe, seeing them at extremely far away distances does actually create a bit of an issue. According to previous propositions, quasars would most likely be created around the time when the universe was about 1 billion years old, would stay very active for a couple of billion years, and would then slowly disappear, turning into more quiet galaxies. But discovering quasars in a universe that was less than 1 billion years old did create a bit of a problem for these earlier explanations, and even earlier propositions in regards to the growth of these massive black holes. A bunch of population 3 stars collapsing into these black hole seeds would still not really explain how something can form only 500 to 600 million years after the formation of the universe. And so this new recent discovery coming out of James Webb, along with the Chandra X-ray telescope, presents us with a really exciting and interesting case. A galaxy now known as UHZ-1. This was a lens galaxy in front of a galactic cluster about 2744. There were 11 galaxies discovered here, but only one of them was visible with the X-rays. And as you can see from this particular observation from the James Webb, it's at a redshift of 10.3. Basically, the universe here was 470 million years old. And because it was producing X-rays, it became possible to analyze it using Chandra X-ray Observatory as well. And if a bright galaxy produces X-rays, the only source can be a central black hole that produces what's known as AGN, active galactic nucleus. And further analysis established this to be a really odd quasar. Now, first of all, based on the amount of X-rays coming from here, it became possible to determine its mass. The mass of the black hole and the mass of the galaxy. It looks like the central black hole is about 40 million solar masses, 10 times as massive as the one in the middle of the Milky Way. Not the biggest, but definitely not the smallest. But by existing so early in the universe, it was very difficult to explain its formation. But not impossible, because there is a second explanation to how massive black holes can form in the early universe, or just in general. And it's actually a model that was originally proposed a couple of years ago, and you can read more about in the paper in the description. Unraveling obese black holes in the first galaxies. There were quite a few scientists involved here, but Agarwal Baskar was the main researcher. And the explanation here uses a very intriguing analysis by basically trying to imagine what the early universe might have been like and what sort of radiation there was here. Because of huge amounts of different types of radiation, certain types of gas would instead collapse directly into much more massive compact object, potentially producing what the scientists refer to as direct collapse black holes, DCBH, with the original paper predicted them to exist specifically at this period of time when the universe was between 350 and 550 million years old. More importantly, it predicts them to be super bright, very likely most luminous objects in that part of the universe, much brighter than any galaxy nearby and even much brighter than the collection of all stars in the middle of this galaxy. With scientists coining a term OBG, obese black hole galaxies, as a kind of a new class of galaxies we never knew existed. And something that no longer exists either. Something that's defined by one simple fact. The black holes here are usually more massive than the rest of the galaxy. Or basically, the mass of the central black hole 
is a lot higher than any gas or any stars. At least initially. Over time though, because of collisions, the galaxy changes a little bit and becomes a regular quasar, eventually becoming a regular galaxy. And the scientists in the paper even make predictions for how we can find them, where we can find them, and what they might resemble if we do find them. Turns out they were actually right. Because that's exactly what the scientists just discovered using this new study. Or technically three separate studies, that as always you can find in the description below. And all three studies are discussing the same object. It's now referred to as UHZ-1. A very distant, very bright quasar, whose mass is quite dramatic compared to any other quasar. As I mentioned, the black hole mass is about 40 million solar masses. But the galaxy where it's located has a total mass of 140 million solar masses. It's a dwarf galaxy. So basically a huge part of this galaxy is the black hole. All of the other previously discovered quasars do not have these mass proportions. Here it's usually about 0.1%, not 28% like in the case of UHZ-1. And even though initially it was kind of difficult to explain this, it looks like that prediction from a few years ago is spot on. Meaning that this black hole must have grown really quickly, because huge amounts of molecular hydrogen prevented star formation and allowed for this gas to then collapse, forming a really massive object in the middle. And not just a massive object, extremely bright object, brighter than the galaxy itself. And because population 3 stars or any other type of a collapse does not do a good job explaining the existence of this object, right now this study right here seems to be directly validated by this new discovery. Although one of the propositions here is that once the black hole forms, it potentially collides and absorbs stars and gas from some sort of a nearby galaxy, forming very close, with the resulting OBG or obese black hole galaxy being a combination of a massive black hole combined with a smaller galaxy whose stars and gas then start orbiting around the center. But because this requires hydrogen that's not ionized, hydrogen that existed in large amounts in the early universe, it would be practically impossible to create something like this after a few hundred million years once the universe ionizes everything during a period we refer to as ionization, when the entire universe suddenly became somewhat transparent replacing molecular hydrogen with ionized hydrogen. So definitely a super important discovery coming out of James Webb and Chandra X-ray Observatory. Now this is just the first such observation and of course the first explanation. There of course might be other alternative explanations in the future, but at least for now this makes total sense. It also solves a major mystery of massive black holes and validates an important assumption about black holes and how they're formed in the early universe. Thank you for watching, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos, once there are additional observations and once something else is discovered by one of these telescopes. Subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.